<laughs> oh lord, this is a bit. Haha! -ha. He who laughs last, laughs loudest. That's kind of a tongue twister. Finally, the filthy infidel Captain Dario Naharis has left this fine earth. While everything will definitely be better without him, I have a lot of extra time on my hands now. Hmm. I do think Dario's skull will look fine on my mantelpiece. I'm glad Dario's gone. It will sure be boring without him. So I can pick a fight with his daughter. Life's too short. It's time to change my ways. I can become a better person. Or Dario has taken enough of my time and energy. No more. So I can feel relief. I can try to become a better person. I can steal his freaking skull. Or I can go on to fight his daughter. So I think I'm going to change my ways and become a better person. I mean, that seems to be the most interesting choice, right? Definitely not the skull choice. So apparently I can be in two places at once, like that's how good of a king I am, because I forgot I was fighting in this tourney as well as on a foreign expedition, so, but no wonder I failed, because uh, I guess I was, my mind was elsewhere. Here we go. The expedition finally reaches the realm of King Mazon II, Zo Grazdan. Your Master of Coin asks you what gift we should bring along as a token of friendship to King Mazon II. Uh, he's the king of New Gis, which I imagine would piss Danny off. So, uh, a dozen strong horses, which is 30 gold. A chest with cloth from back home, um, which is 15 gold and only, impre uh, only improves his opinion of five. It's a fine gift, not flattered. Uh, a bunch of rare herbs, which I would lose five gold and nothing would happen, or my courtesy should be enough of a gift. So we're gonna we're gonna do a dozen strong horses. We're gonna do this right. So thirty gold. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm still at the tourney, so perhaps I can place a bet. That'll be good. It was Sir Sarmion Yaronwood uh, and Sir Balabar Sunderland's turn to joust in the list. And Sir Balabar. One soundly. In the final tilt, Sir Saruman was sent flying from the saddle in a hail of shattered lance pieces. He landed with a sickening crunch, clearly grievously injured. Ooh. That's not good. What's the what's the What's the injury? Ooh, lost a hand. Yikes. Alright, here we go. At dinner you notice King Mazon of Nugis is a new Gis's face growing red with annoyance as he glares at your steward, shoveling his food in with his bare hands. Ooh. I have a high learning skill. Sir Hector Chester of the Iron Throne is paying his regards to the blessing, blah blah blah. Uh, please execute him. I'm trying to raise this street urgen. Or, I'm sorry, not execute him. <laughs> please excuse him. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lunatic. So I could uh, excuse him or I could say I'm hungry too, but uh, let's let's do the learning skill option. That's why I have those skills if we're not going to use them. You're walking idly around the court of King Mazon II when you suddenly hear discussion increasing the in intensity around the corner. Turning the corner, you're surprised to see one of the septons from your expedition engaged in a wild theological debate with a local noble. This could endanger the whole venture. So this must be stopped. Or these heretics need to see the error of their ways. No, definitely, this this needs to be stopped. Um, the high septon can uh, can have a lower opinion of me. That's that's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. After long arrows of discussion in the terms of how trade can be sustained, you and King Mazon the Second come to a conclusion that you both agree on. This will be a profitable agreement. So, good. Uh, it seems like there's been another injury. Oh, Lord, uh, Sir Eric, the fought Robert Strong. Oh no, Eric Whitehead, who was a formidable fighter and uh, up for the King's Guard, is now injured and uh, one-legged. Good God, Robert Strong, at the ripe young age of 64, is still uh, still hurting people in tourneys. Excellent. It looks like uh, with the new trade route set up, you return with the first batch of goods and sell them off for a nice profit. The influx of new wares will also benefit the, co the economy for a long period to come. So we gain, yes, 412 gold. That puts us really, really close. 
And actually, I think I have a plan on how we're going to do this. So more money is always needed, and uh, everything is going to go up quite well. Um, so I'm going to pause really quick, and I'm going to show you what my plan is. Uh, so there's a plot that's unfolding. So um, I actually have an option. Oh, that's not it. Under the Intrigue tab to uh, ask the Iron Bank for another loan of 400. So if I do that, I can actually pay off the other loan, I believe. Wait, where is it? Do I not have the option to pay it off? Hold on. What is happening here? What are the conditions? I don't have the option to pay it off. What happened to my loan? Uh, we could... Hmm. I I'm a little confused. Uh, what about the loan from the Lannisters? Can we pay that off? Where is this option? We just taken loan, but I don't have the option to pay it back right now. Okay, so I suppose what we can do is just hold on to the money and wait. I'm afraid that the money is going to go away. Um, I'm a little nervous that that's going to happen. So, um, mm, what to do? What to do? What to do? Hey, look! It's like a like a rematch of like season one of Game of Thrones. Um, Sir Robert Strong and Loras Tyrell were next in the joust, and uh, without so much drama, it seems like Sir Robert has won um, and got his revenge, I suppose, because Loras won the last time. He fought well. These guys really don't know who they're messing with. The Raiders of Pirate Lord Galoro of Last Refuge has arrived at King's Landing with 554 men to uh, pillage the county. And, uh, you know, good on him, I suppose, if, uh, if he really wants to uh, get involved in a, in a battle of 6,000 people where I am at the helm with my freaking dragon. Eat that, son. Okay, so apparently there are other people that want to kill me because I thought Dario was dead. Let's see, who wants to kill me? Who wants to kill the king? Hmm, doesn't say, hmm, doesn't say, doesn't say, doesn't say. Hmm, I guess we'll just have to be, uh, be careful. Hmm, looks like we've been given a nickname. Not necessarily the one I would have wanted from the beginning, but King Aegon the Sixth, the Mad. King Aegon the Mad of the Iron Throne. Looks like the, the last two uh, Targaryen kings are both known as the Mad. It's an unfortunate uh, chain of events. Hopefully uh, my son will not be as... Uh, uh, he's greedy. Dang it. Will not be as uh, difficult. Greedy and deceitful. Diligent and humble. And uh, his child bride at the the age of 14. So it appears uh, Lord Loramis uh, Mud has died of his cancer finally at the age of 64. That sounded bad. He, he passed away from his cancer. Um, and so uh, he's replaced by Lord Paramount Loren of the Trident who has uh, two children, Lord Duncan and Lady B. Lord Duncan is only one year old, doesn't have any traits to, uh, to speak of, but uh, hopefully this, uh, this will do well for House Mud to, uh, you know, strengthen the line, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you know, if I need to step in and uh, marry into House Mud, I, I suppose I can do that while we await uh, the eventual colonization of Old Stones. So, uh, Lord Paramount Harold Aaron has declared uh, another war over the, um, the bite, the rulership of the bite of the bite on uh, Lord Paramount Lauren. Um, I suppose the the truce with uh, his father was over, um, and it seems like 
I really can't let that happen. So I'm going to let this war go on for a little bit maybe. Um, and then the moment one of them tells me, probably uh, Lord Paramount Lauren tells me, that he doesn't want um, to fight and wants me to call off the war, then I'll do that. So, um, yeah, we'll make that happen. It's time once again for Where Are They Now? And today we're looking at House Tyrell. And so, as you all know, Lord Paramount Willis, the son of Mace, uh, is the ruler of the Reach, and uh, he is Warden of the South, as he should be. He's also Keeper of the Swans and my Master of Laws. He served faithfully and uh, has a very high opinion of me. And so we are going to, uh, to take a look at what happened to House Tyrell um, and how they have branched off from what would normally be considered the uh, sort of the norm in Game of Thrones. So uh, Lord Garland the Gallant is the master at arms for the Reach, as one would expect. Uh, he does have a small case of the gout, but he has um, three children, Sir Ryan Tyrell, uh, who's eh, not so great, uh, and Sir Hobbert Tyrell, who is also eh, not so great. Lord Loris, or Sir Loris, is the Knight of Flowers. He is uh, in the King's Guard. He's 47. He still has all of his great traits. Wrath, proud, family person, brave, zealous. Uh, he's still a formidable fighter. He's scarred. Uh, he has placed first in the Grand Tourney, or I'm sorry, he has a Grand Tourney third place, a uh, small tourney, and a regional tourney wins. Um, and he is uh, faithfully serving in Dragonstone, protecting Prince Aemon, the crown prince. Uh, Marjorie Tyrell, who was exiled with her husband, uh, her, her third husband, something like that. King Joffrey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Lord Paramount Renly, those should be switched. And uh, Tommen Waters, who I executed. Um, I exiled her. She died of complications related to gout not that long ago. 2nd of September, so only a couple of months before I decided to check in, uh, she passed away. She ended up becoming a liberator in her life. Uh, she was depressed and had gout, um, but she also married an archon, um, Malakwo, the 2nd of Tyrosh. So she married the, the, the head guy in, uh, in Tyrosh, so good for her. Wanting to be a queen, well, she, uh, she did kind of close to that. She had one daughter, um... Ternesia Zocon, uh, who is, again, not so great, has pretty good intrigue, um, but uh, that pattern's kind of continuing. So, and uh, there were more children, I suppose, that ended up coming about because of uh, Mace's uh, relationships later on in his life, but uh, but that's House Tyrell. And uh, not, not as bad as some of the other houses have fared. Your dragon, Rhaegal, is a ravenous beast. He regularly roams the lands of King's Landing, gorging on livestock of peasants. Hundreds of them have seeked audience with you in the past month to protest about this, and their discontent is growing all the while. I could say, so, he is a dragon, what do they expect? Or I can give them gold and gain piety, which I'm going to do. As important as gold is, it's more important to have uh, faithful uh, servants, so to speak. So, uh, da, 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 um, that's fine with me. I can have my, uh, ooh, Illyrio recently went missing. After frantic search by the guard, it seems he had simply vanished into the air. Not so, apparently. It turns out he was forcibly abducted by the agents of Lord Garrett of Yelshire who intended to keep him in his dungeons until he decides otherwise. Who is that? I don't even know who this is. It's a pirate who is infirm. What? I mean, why am I getting... I mean, his liege is Lord Jacari's Valyrian, but I mean, what do I care? Oh. My. Goodness. Dark wings, dark words. A raven has arrived from White Tree, with word from Lady Olivia of the Haunted Forest. It can no longer be denied that the ancient enemy that is the Others has risen once again. It is time for all men to set aside their petty differences and unite to reclaim the dawn.
what 